Welcome to part three of Chameleon at Home for Kids. We left off with tours of the wind and string families. Now we're going to meet the rest of the chameleons, our pianist, our harpist, and our percussionist. While we connect with wind instruments with our breath, and we hold string instruments so close to our bodies, these last three instruments make sounds when a string or other resonator is plucked with a hand, a mallet, or even a hammer. Vivian takes us on a tour inside the grand piano and plays some music that's high, twinkly music, and she shows us how it can make low, gruff music or friendly music by playing in the middle of the piano. Francisca is living her dream, playing the harp, which she wanted to when she was six years old, but her parents made her wait. Well, there's no more waiting for Francisca right now. She plays the harp all the time. Speaking of dreams, she's going to play a piece uh, that takes us deep into the evening with a solo about nighttime. Matt loves to play percussion because it allows him to make an instrument out of just about anything he can hit with a hammer or even his hand, his bare hands, including pieces of random debris. In fact, he plays for us a piece he composed using a table full of junk. Hi everyone, my name is Vivian and today I'd like to introduce you to the piano. We'll talk first about what happens on the inside. And then I'd love to show you a few things here at the keyboard. This piano is very heavy. It weighs about 600 pounds and it has a golden iron plate with six holes to help produce a beautiful sound. There are over 200 strings here crisscrossed as you can see for each note that I play. And if you look closely, you'll be able to see some white hammers below the strings that strike the strings and produce my notes. This is how it's done. The piano has 88 keys that span a tremendous range. Way up here we have some high notes that can sparkle. See if you can guess what this piece is. If you guessed that it was Twinkle, you are correct. And down here in the bass, we have some brooding big tones We also have a middle range, something very cheerful for you. See if you can guess what this is. Does Toy Story 3 ring a bell? It's such a cute melody. And finally, my favorite part of the piano is to being able to play for other people and to bring them joy. And recently, I sent my mother a recording of this that spans all three ranges together. And finally, I'd like to perform one more piece for you. It's called Scherzo by Schubert.
Hello everyone, my name is Francisca Huhn. I play the harp. I'm originally from Germany, but I've lived in Boston for the, more than 20 years, so this is also my home now. When I was six, I saw the harp and said I was going to be a harpist. And my parents were a little surprised and made me wait for three years. So finally, when I was nine years old, I was allowed to start playing the harp and a dream came through. And to this day, I live my dream. I'm very fortunate to do what I love. I get to teach and I get to perform. And harpists perform solo. They perform with other musicians in chamber music, and they can also perform with lots of other musicians in orchestra or opera. And I'm fortunate to have, an, have, a, have the possibility to do all of them combined. Um, the harp is a big instrument. It's about six feet tall. It weighs about 70 to 80 pounds, depending you know which model you get. Um, and I have to transport it. So for all my activities, I have to bring the harp. That means if it snows, if it rains, I have still have to transport my harp. Unlike pianists, for example, who will often have a piano at the venue. Um, so without further ado, I will play a little excerpt from the Nutcracker for you. Nutcracker is a ballet that's performed during Christmas time. Boston Ballet does a beautiful version every year, so I hope one of these years you get to see it. It's from the Waltz of the Flowers, and it's, it's a very, very short glimpse of what the harp can sound like. So you may have noticed that we have the same range as the piano. Short strings are high, long strings are the lower pitches. I only play with my fingertips and because my pinky is too short, I cannot use it. Yeah? The solo that I chose is something completely different, just to kind of showcase the harp from a very different light. It was written in 1927 by Carlos Alzado and it's written at a time where most composers are not really using a lot of extended techniques. Extended techniques are techniques when you're using noises or sounds on your instrument that are not necessarily coming from the idiomatic way of playing. So you'll see me doing lots of other effects. And I would love for you to imagine what kind of night this is. Is this a beautiful night with a shiny moon? Is this a scary night with creepy woods? Is this a nightmare? Is this a sweet dream? Just let the different colors of the harp allure you into a very beautiful landscape of beautiful imagination. Enjoy.
Hi, my name is Matt Sherrick, and I'm the percussionist with the Chameleon Arts Ensemble. It's a real joy for me to be able to play for all of you today. I'm recording this from my home studio uh, right here in Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts, not far away from all of you. So I have to say that I love being a percussionist, because percussion instruments are anything that you can hit. So no matter where you are, there's always something you can play music with and express yourself on. Now, when most people think of percussion, the first thing that pops into their heads is drums. And so I'm going to start today by playing for you a quick drum solo. I'm going to be using the snare drum. And the snare drum is simply a drum where underneath the drum itself, there are these metal wires. And if I pull those metal wires so they're touching the drum head, they make a buzzing sound. Now when we think of snare drum, we often think of marching bands. And so today I'm going to play for you a solo called French American Rudimel Solo Number no. 5 by Joe Tompkins. It's from a collection of super cool pieces that combine aspects of American marching music with French music and jazz. So, hope you enjoy. So like I said earlier, one of the best parts about being a percussionist is being able to take anything you find around the house and make music with it. On this table in front of me, I have nine pieces of junk, basically. I have some old scrap wood. I have some broken frying pans. And I have some old desk bells. And with these instruments, I'm going to play for you a solo that I wrote called Table Full of Dreams.
And so I'd like to end my little segment uh, by introducing to all of you my favorite percussion instrument, the marimba. The marimba is a big xylophone, which means that it's a bunch of pieces of wood, like you saw in that last piece, only these pieces of wood are all tuned to notes like on a piano. And so if I use two mallets, I can play melodies that you all might know. For example, But I can also play the marimba like it's a piano. And so I do that by taking two sticks in each of my hands. It's kind of like using a puppet or pretending like I'm a lobster playing the piano. And this way I can play melodies and accompaniments all by myself. So the last piece I'm gonna play for you is called Ketamia by the French composer Emmanuel Sejournet. And when you're listening to this piece, I want you to imagine sitting on a beach, watching the sunset. Thank you so much for joining us as we spend some time playing music for you and expressing our emotions and fulfilling our imaginations. We hope you, we can see you in person sometime soon. But until then, keep listening and keep searching for ways to express your emotions and fulfill your imaginations with music. I've been so inspired by these uh, musicians that I think I'm going to play some music myself right now.